Welcome to Mofo RC. Today I'm going to be building a mini trailer. And uh, this little trailer I've got here is kind of my first prototype production. You can see I've been testing it out, so the tires and everything kind of dirty on there. But it is a leaf sprung trailer and it actually has really good suspension. Uh, just for that one leaf, uh, you know, not having the helper leaves installed uh, worked great. So uh, I also have for you a whole kit here of basically what the ultimate kit, if you bought all of the parts for the trailer plus the hitch and everything, would look like. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, just go ahead and actually install all of it onto a C10. Uh, and I'm going to build a little trailer. So this may be kind of a long video. Here's the, a picture of the little hitch installed on a uh, Jeep. Part of the hitch anyways. Let's see if we'll get the focus here. There we go. So the hitch does uh, also come with a suspension upgrade kit. You can see where all the uh, the extra holes are here. You can mount your shocks in different positions if you'd like. The uh, reason I did that is just, uh, just a lot easier you know, to offer the whole upgrade kit with the hitch. Uh, it will come with the front, which is not installed on this one. But I do have the front that it will come with when you buy the trailer hitch. So here's the bottom of the hitch here. Uh, this is all printed out of ABS plastic as well. Um, it's a really good kind of thermoplastic, um, strong but durable, and uh, holds up for a really long time. <clears throat> Much stronger than something like PLA or some of the other stuff that is, is easier to print and may look better. But this is a much stronger material, which is why I can make leaf springs out of it. Things like that, because it is durable and bendable and flexible and all that. So what you get in the bag, if you buy the complete kit, what you will get in the bag will look like what I'm going to show you. So here is the suspension upgrade I was talking about, plus some of the hitch parts here. You get little stickers too. Uh, this is your basic hitch. So if you buy the kit and you don't spend the extra couple bucks on the double jointed hitch, you will just have this. And this will bolt right onto there, like that, and act kind of as a clamp here, uh, which still allows movement up and down in the trailer and plenty of movement side to side but it is not nearly as good up and down movement as the double jointed hitch which I will show you now. Here is a lot of the parts that will come with the uh, the trailer kit. Hopefully I don't lose anything dumping all this out here. Your screw kit you know, each part here will have individually its own screws if you don't buy the whole kit all at one. Um, you'll have your little pre-bent leaf springs, such as these. And these leaf springs are, uh, they're printed flat, and then I heat them up and bend them to the desired shape. So if you, uh, if you want to make it lower or higher, you know, uh, stiffen it up a little, and I wouldn't suggest you trying to do it yourself, but if you wanted to, you can heat them up and re-bend them. So there's your, your leaf springs, the main leaf springs, and here's a couple little helper leaf springs. You can add those if you want to make the uh, suspension itself a little stiffer. Um, as it is, as it comes with just the regular springs, it's pretty much perfect. Now, if you load it up with a bunch of heavy stuff, uh, you might want to use the helper springs. This is the double jointed hitch. Um, I've been calling this the double chung geef hitch. Uh, a buddy of mine kind of came up with the idea for this. And uh, so I'm giving him credit by calling it the chung geef. And so this will mount onto uh, your hitch here by screwing it into that. And then when screwed in, it will allow just, you know, massive amount of up and down movement for the trailer. Plus, all that awesome side-to-side -side movement as well you know so you'll get just the trailer that's not going to inhibit the where your truck's going or how it's going or the direction it's going 
And you can mount this different ways depending on how you want uh, the height of the trailer to be. You can mount it to the bottom like that. You can mount it to the top like this. Um, you can flip this whole part the other direction and make it higher. You can mount it on the bottom and flip this part down to make it lower. So lots of options for usability and adjustability there as far as how you want to do it. These are going to be your wheel hubs here. These two little pieces here will go right into the hex hub there that you have with the wheel. See that? Uh, and then it will come with these longer screws that go through the wheel and everything into the axle. Now, uh, <clears throat> there is also a couple washers in here. There's four of them. Uh, what I will do when, when I'm installing these and what I would recommend you to do Install the, the kind of smooth side of the washer, one here facing out, and the other one facing in towards it. So that way they got kind of a smooth rub against each other, and they're not, uh, you know, not going to be any, any real main friction or anything like that. This is the axle right here. You know, just basically just kind of looks like a little straight axle. And uh, the orientation I print these things in is to make them stronger. That's why this is not completely round. When you print something completely round, it takes a lot of the strength away because there's not a base for it to be printed on the whole time. And uh, all this stuff is printed in heated build chambers. Um, it's ironed. You know, it's very strong stuff. So, I mean, real strong, real tough material. These are your little, um, your little joints for the leaf springs. So there's going to be these four here. Those four go to the rear of the trailer here. As you can see they're installed there those are what uh, give you you know more kind of spring uh, gosh I can't remember what those dang things are called right now but uh, th that's where the back of the leaf spring mounts to uh, in the front you've got this little joint here which is these and there's four of those those go right through they bolt right through the frame rail on here go all the way into the other end and then your leaves are captured by the two on each end. Same thing with these here. <clears throat> so that's uh, all the basic parts for, uh, you know, all the basic small parts here. Let me move that kind of out of the way here and show you what else we have. Let me know if you guys uh, that are watching right now if you can hear everything okay, and uh, you know, let me know if the music in the background is too loud or anything like that. Some more stickers in there as you can see. So here are the main frame parts. This is your main lower trailer frame. This is the bottom. This is printed in the orientation laying like that. That way you have a nicer looking finish on the top. You know, nice smooth, almost glassy looking finish on top. And this residue stuff here is uh, likely going to be glue. And you can probably either wash that off with water uh, if, you, if you don't like it. Or you could use a little bit of sandpaper or something to kind of smooth that out to get that glue off of there. It is a water-based glue. So if you don't mind or, you know, leave it alone. Otherwise, if you want to get rid of it, you can try washing that off with just water or something. Here are the sides <coughs> and the front and rear of the box for the trailer. Look like that. And this is, uh, it's ABS, like I said earlier, it is also paintable. So if you want to paint any of this, you can just, um, you know, wash it with, with warm soapy water first. Uh, because I do a lot of work out here in the garage and it's not uncommon that I might have a greasy fingerprint on here somewhere. You know, and then if you try to paint over a greasy fingerprint, the paint won't stick to it. And you can also, um, <clears throat> you can also, gosh, I just lost my train of thought. You can also sand these little parts if you don't like that kind of rough finish, which honestly doesn't bother me at all. If you paint it'll cover the rough finish. If you don't want to paint over it, but you want to make it a little smoother looking, you can sand these as well, you know, lightly. I would just say some, some fairly fine sand grit paper, uh, fairly fine grit sandpaper, or even like a Brillo pad, something like that you can use to sand those with. Give me just one second, somebody is messaging me here.
about that. Um, <laughs> okay, now I'm back, sorry about that. So we're going to go ahead and actually build this little trailer today. Uh, I do have, this was like my prototype, so, you know, the parts as I was playing it were kind of going along, and it does work fine. I just, this is the final version, I want to go ahead and build the final version of it for myself here. I do have a couple wheels and tires I'm going to use on this. These are C10 wheels and tires. They I find that I think they look the best on here, personally. Um, the deadbolt ones and Jeep ones, you know, they just kind of seem a little large. But I mean, if you're looking for that real big tire look, you could go with the, the deadbolt ones or Jeep. You know, make it a little taller, a little bigger tire. Or you could put whatever else you want on there. You know, if you got bead locks you want to put on there or anything like that, you can do that as well. So we're going to start with moving all this junk out of the way. I can have a place to work. Here's the C10 we're going to be putting on. This is a brand new C10 right out of the box. Uh, I did pull the battery out already. And uh, that's pretty much all I've done to that is take the battery out of it. So let me set that out of the way for a second. And I'm going to kind of organize all this, make it a little easier on myself. Get rid of all these little bags. And these little bags, uh, my parts do come in these little bags. They're actually really nice bags. They're mylar. So if you want, you can always reuse those little bags for whatever you want to use them for. Now I would say don't try not to tear them up when you open them because they're really nice bags. Let me find a stool. I'm not standing the whole time. <clears throat> All right, I got some tools little bag of screws. I'm going to go ahead and dump this out into a pan. Uh, and all of these screws are stainless steel. So they should last a long time. They're, they're good quality screws. Um, they are very, very slightly magnetic. So I mean, they're almost not magnetic at all, just barely. So if you are trying to use like a magnetic tip uh, driver, they probably won't stick to it. Just, you know, for your own, keep that in mind ability, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the leaf springs on the axle right now. <clears throat> and uh, these are going to be 1.4 by 6 millimeter screws. That secure those to the axle. Most of the other screws are going to be 1.4 millimeter by 5 millimeter. And then you will have uh, a couple 1.4 by 8 millimeter and a couple 1.4 by 10. And then you'll have some 3 millimeter by either 20 or 22 millimeter. And you'll have one 3 millimeter by 16 millimeter. If you're wondering, these are uh, positionable. So the mounting block here is actually offset to one side just a little bit. Let's see if you can see that here. So right now they're both in the same position. If I turn one of these around, you can see it is now offset just slightly to the back. <clears throat> so if you want to move the axle forward a little bit or backward a little bit, you can decide kind of on your own which way you want to mount those. I'm going to go ahead and mount them so that the axle is further towards the middle of the trailer than it is to the rear. And you will just take your, uh, your leaf spring and secure it right here onto the axle with those two little holes. If you are going to use the helper springs, uh, if you're going to use the helper springs, try something real quick. If you're going to use the helper springs, um, you can use them. They would go on uh, <clears throat> right below this spring, like that. If you want to use the helper springs, uh, they're just going to stiffen up the suspension quite a bit more. 
Um, may give you a little bit higher ride height as well. Me, I'm <clears throat> I'm not going to use the helper springs. Um, I kind of like the soft, softer suspension. Hello there, Dan Woodruff. I kind of like the softer suspension on here. Uh, a little more flexy, flexible, whatever you want to call it. That's just my personal preference, but I like the softer suspension. These screw holes are not processed. Sometimes I'll process a screw hole, which basically just means running a drill bit through it first, um, which makes the screws a little bit easier to install, <clears throat> but also uh, also can kind of uh, make them easier to strip out as well. So I didn't process any of these screw holes that are on here. And I, that may change. I might process some of them. I don't know. We'll just kind of see what happens here as I put it together. Uh, if you do decide that you want to uh, drill out any of these or process or whatever you want, whatever I just said a minute ago, if you want to process them, drill them out a little bit bigger, I would recommend using a 1.2 millimeter if you're drilling in something that uh, that is going to be having a screw threaded into it. If you're going to be using a... What's up there, Clinton? Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's a... Uh, you know, it, I do like the little trailer. It is pretty cool. I love this thing, man. I was playing on some rocks earlier. I got some video of that. Uh, I may load onto this somewhere or something. But yeah, uh, if you're going to process through like a hole, such as like these leaf spring holes, if you want to make it to where it slides through there without being threaded in, uh, you would probably use a 1.4 millimeter driver or a uh, drill bit. Otherwise, uh, 1.2, or even like if you can find a 1.1, that would be good. Or a, uh, a 1.0 would probably even work as well pretty good. And you don't have to tighten these all the way. As you can see, as I tighten this one all the way, it kind of took a little bounce out of that spring. So I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit. Probably still a little bit too tight. If you do tighten them up all the way, it's going to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit less springy, which you know just depends on what you want. But this is a, a build-it-yourself kit. I'm not going to be putting these together for people and selling them because, well, it just takes too long for me to be able to sit back and do that for each trailer. Uh, and, and I will have have more options. Uh, what's up there, John? Red Viking Hobbies. If anybody likes, wants to see some cool videos, check his stuff out too. Uh, Red Viking Hobbies RC on YouTube. He has some real great stuff. He even has some of my stuff on the, on some of his videos too. Now I completely forgot what I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. All right. Now we have these on the axle. The leaf springs are on the axle, and uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of set this to the side now. And work probably on, uh, let's go ahead and work on the, the base, the chassis of the trailer. We'll go ahead and work on that a little bit, get the, uh, the little leaf spring mounts installed on there. That way I can mount the axle to the base of the trailer. Uh, and these are all, all of the holes in these are small holes. Uh, you don't want to drill these holes out because the screws that thread through them thread into each of them to help secure it all on there. So don't drill any of those holes out if you are going to drill anything out. <clears throat> all right, and that is going to be a whole bunch of these eight millimeter long screws. We're going to need like one, two, three, a whole bunch. We're going to need probably a bunch. We'll just grab all of them or grab as many as we can find here. Uh, what is the price? The price, it's already listed on my website. I haven't put any pictures of it yet on my website, uh, but the price is on there already, www.moforc.com. The 
prices on there. Uh, I believe the basic trailer is, uh, I think I got it listed at 35 on there, which the basic trailer is this little kit without the wheels and tires. If you want some of the, uh, the other parts, such as like this double jointed trailer hitch, that is a, uh, I believe a five or a six dollar upgrade on there. Uh, this regular little hitch will be one dollar. And I might even just include that on there. <clears throat> but uh, I would highly recommend the double jointed one. And, and you'll see why once we get this together. Uh, this little parts here, these ones are for the C10 or the Jeep. This little suspension upgrade kit slash uh, trailer hitch mount. That is for the C10 or Jeep. There is also a version for the Deadbolt or the Betty. That's what this one here would be. Just slightly different mounting because of where the shocks are located and everything like that. Uh, and those, I believe, are like uh, 15 or 18 bucks or something like that. I've got them listed at. Uh, and that is for those parts, the front parts, and the hitch assembly here. Uh, plus the screws for it. So uh, I tried to keep the cost down on everything as much as I possibly could. And, um, you know, it just kind of, it is what it is. It's a whole lot of parts and a whole, a whole lot of time on the printer to make this little thing. And uh, my normal suspension upgrade kit alone, I think, is uh, 19 20 bucks right around there. And that would not come with the hitch. So this is coming with the hitch for cheaper than just the suspension upgrade would be. Uh, what we got? Can you order it with a set of wheels and tires? Yes, if I have available wheels and tires, I will list them on the site. I would recommend like my favorite tires I found to put on here. You know, stock tires have just been uh, the little C10 tires. If you got any spare ones of those, or if you see anyone selling them. Otherwise, uh, you can use the deadbolt Jeep wheels and tires, or you can even put, you know, whatever kind of beadlocks you want to put on there, uh, such as my, uh, such as my 22 bolt beadlocks, which let me grab one. I'll show what they look like. You could put those on there, and then you could use pretty much any uh, 1.0 tire you want to use. So here's my 22 bolt. Uh, I call these the super locks because these things are super easy to put together and they lock the tire super great. So those are the super lock bead locks. Um, I think I've got them listed on there. You can buy four or you can buy two. If not, I might change that as well. And maybe even offer an option to buy the, those wheels <clears throat> with tires. I do have as well, um, gosh, around 100 or 150 sets of RC four wheel drive tires and different variations coming as well. They probably will be here in the next week or two, and I'll be putting those on the website once they get there. So I'll have a whole lot of options for uh, for tires and wheels. Uh, I did order a whole bunch of more wheels too. Uh, I do have like three or four different set styles of beadlocks on my website right now. Eventually, I'll have like six or eight, maybe nine different styles. <clears throat> All right, back to this. These are kind of tough to get on just because everything is so small. So I'm just going to start with the front ones and start installing that screw until it kind of pokes out the other end. And that's going to go in those front two holes right here. The back one is for the, uh, the shackles. That's what they're called. I was trying to think of that earlier, the shackles. So that hole here is big enough that this doesn't thread into the hole in the frame. It only threads into the outer spring mounts. Now I'm going to have to kind of apply pressure on this side while I screw it in to get them to screw together, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Let me try using my thumb as I do that. There we go. That's easier. Hopefully. Let me get a better driver here. Okay. 
Somebody said this was easy. <laughs> but it's totally awesome. <laughs> And so what you could do, if you do have troubles putting these together, you can drill out one of these to make the, uh, the screw not thread into the first part, the outer one here, while you're doing this, if you do have troubles. But uh, you try a little bit, you will get it eventually. Just like I finally got it there. Okay, I'm just going to leave that slightly loose right now. See how that still moves around? I probably can't tell, but that still moves around. I'm going to leave it slightly loose while I put the other one in. <clears throat> and again, these are the 8 millimeter long screws. 1.4 millimeter by 8 millimeter. And those are all included with this little trailer kit. So it's pretty much a no-brainer as far as <clears throat> the hardware goes. It'll all come with it. Um, and I do even add a couple extras most of the times when I send stuff out. Because every now and then you do get a screw that's messed up. You know, I've got like 25,000 screws I'm sitting on right now. And out of that 25,000, there's probably going to be, you know, 10 or 20 of them that are messed up. And I can't visually inspect each screw before shipping stuff out. So I'll probably add a couple extra screws to each shipment of things like I see I do send out. There's that one mount. And uh, I did leave it loose, so it moves around, because you don't need to sandwich that in there real tight. You just want it to, to be installed. These screws install to the other screws, and they'll hold together. I'm going to make sure that does fit in there. If it doesn't, I might have to loosen it and then put it back together. Yes, it does fit in there. Okay. Do you want to use a magnifying glass? <laughs> You know, uh, gosh, I've thought about buying some some reading glasses or something uh, just to keep eye strain from occurring because, man, there's some days I'll get a bad headache uh, after doing this for so long. You know, during the day, after doing this for several hours, I may have a bad headache the next day. So I may look into getting, like, some reading glasses. Just because the stuff is so small and you're constantly straining as you look at it. All right, I'm going to try and put the other side together. And there is a smooth and a rough side to each of these. If you try to use the smooth side, see the kind of shiny finish? Try to use the smooth side to go towards the inner where the spring is going to mount. I'm just going to thread that through about there. Maybe I'll go ahead and stick the other one on there too, then it won't move around so much when I'm putting it together. I'll tell you what, these MIP drivers, uh, th this is the 050 MIP driver, and uh, I think it was about 15 bucks for this one driver. But uh, you can stick the screw in there, and I mean, it's once you jam that screw in there, it doesn't really fall out. And uh, that's something else I also have on order is a whole bunch of tool sets that I'll begin selling on the website as well once they get here. Very nice looking aluminum handle uh, tool sets and they are in the, uh, the 1.3 millimeter which is pretty much the same as the 050. Uh, I also have the 1.5 millimeter and I have a cool little finger 4 millimeter tool to go with those. So you can, uh, it's got like a four, maybe a four and a half millimeter, or something like that. Uh, that will be real nice for putting wheels, you know, taking wheels and tires on and off. So you're not using a giant, I don't, I don't know what you guys are using. What are you guys using to put your wheels and tires on? Right now, I've been using this to put my wheels and tires on. You know, uh, leave in comments what you're using. Because I don't think, I don't think the, the kits come with any sort of tool to take the tires off, right? I mean, they come with that little Allen wrench, but they don't really come with anything to put the wheels and tires on. So I've been using this, but I will have a real nice little thumb wheel uh, tool pretty soon for sale on the website as well. I'm going to sandwich that in there with my thumb, just like I did the other side, and start turning the screw. 
This is probably the hardest part of this whole trailer is putting these parts on right here. The rest of it's going to go nice and smooth. Hopefully I found the hole in there. Can't tell. Nope, I did not. Loosen that back out again. screw this one in a little bit see if I can get this one started first. Maybe that'll make it easier. Okay. Let's try something else. got an idea. All right, here's a good idea. I'm going to put a screw through the other side and then remove it to pre-thread those holes ish to make this easier. Because right now I'm trying to thread these as I install them and it's not working very well. And you are cutting your own threads while you do this. These are not threaded holes, they are just holes that are smaller than the screw. Uh, let's see, same, straight from the toolbox, had to order several smaller hex drivers. Yeah, it'll be nice once I get that little toolkit for sale, and it probably won't be all that expensive either. But I got a pretty good deal on them, so I'll probably just kind of pass the savings along with those. All right, now that their holes are somewhat threaded, hopefully this will be easier to install. And I just heard one of my printers over there finish. If you're wondering, I do have five printers that run pretty much 24 hours a day at the moment to keep up with everybody's demand. And uh, I will be having, I will likely have some sort of an instruction manual provided with this, you know, directions or instructions or whatever you want to call it. Um, pretty much I have a little instruction manual for everything that I do sell at the moment, or most everything, I think, maybe all of it. And, uh, yeah, most of the stuff is kind of simple and straightforward, but every now and then you need a second thought about something. And it's nice to have some sort of an instruction manual to look at. Okay, so that one's installed, and I left it loose as well. So it kind of moves around still. We're almost done with the hard part. Now I'm going to do the rear shackles. And I think I'm going to do the same thing I just did on the front. I'm going to pre-drill or ream or whatever you want to call this little hole here with the screw. <clears throat> same thing for the top hole here. That should make it a little easier to install. I'm going to go ahead and put that into about there, stick that in the back hole here, and then jam that on and screw it together again. And this might be a little easier if you're not trying to do this on video as well. If you're at home doing this and you can sit right over the part and look at it when you're doing it, it might be a little bit easier than what I'm doing here. Okay, that's pretty much all I need to do for that one. There's our movable rear shackle. I'm going to do 
the same thing for this one. I'm going to go ahead and pre-thread that hole, or both holes rather, for the inner one. And I wouldn't recommend using any power tools for this kind of thing. Um, and I know I'm guilty of it sometimes. That's why I have this, because I've taken this out of the handle so I can stick it in the drill chuck and zap 10,000 screws together in five minutes instead of this. But I would not recommend doing that might be fine for 5 out of 10 screws or 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 but you might mess up that one part you're trying to put together and then you'll feel like a complete dummy because you're impatient I know I'm guilty of that oh there it goes flying I said this will probably be easier for you if you're not trying to do this on video. Or if you have smaller hands than I do. I've got giant fat hands. Hello RC Mask Master. Okay, there we go. That one's installed. Got both of my rear shackles on. At this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the sides on and the front and back of the box, and then we'll put the axle on after that. Uh, these are all going to be 1.4 by 5 millimeter screws to install all the sides. I pull those out of my dish here and set them here. <clears throat> and you might be able to use a 1.4 by 6 millimeter screw, but uh, you may end up poking through the other end if you do. But I know the 1.4 by 6 millimeter screws aren't that common, anyways. Uh, Maybe only me and a few other people sell them. Um, I like using the 1.4 by 6 millimeter screws for most of the things that I put together because the uh, the length. I get a little bit more grip on everything. But uh, for this, you don't really need that. So these pieces, as you can see, there's holes on one side of it. And not holes on the other side of it. So the side with the holes, these are the holes that are going to be threading into. These holes here are just holes that the screw is going to slide through <clears throat> while it goes into the other one. And it doesn't really matter what side you start with or anything like that. I'm just going to start with this one right here. Uh, I will be in the future this is the first little trailer kit I've made for these. I will be making more different lengths, variations, sizes. I'll probably make some options and upgrades for this one as well. I'll probably make like a little camper cover top for it. Uh, I might even do like uh, little rails, maybe a little rail cover top if you wanted to use your own. Like if you want to make like a fake canvas top or make a real canvas top or whatever for it. I might do some little railings that would allow you to do that. Or even like the, the little camper top I built for this, I might even have like rails that would mount on top of that. You can mount like a kayak or something on it. Uh, I did also find something kind of cool the other day at, uh, I can't remember if it was Target or Walmart, but uh, I found this little motorcycle and it's like almost the perfect size. Check this thing out. It's like the perfect size little 124th scale motorcycle. And uh, it's like, uh, it's kind of heavy. This part is die cast metal. So it is kind of heavy. <clears throat> it might not be the greatest thing to stick on your SCX24, but you know, if you're hauling a trailer around or something, you know, you 
kind of cool. Maybe I'll even make a little motorcycle trailer or something for these. You know, I don't know. We'll just kind of see. It did come with this little guy on it, too. Which, you know, I don't know. Maybe you can cut the top of them off and put them in your little deadbolt or something. Or in C pen or who knows. So there's one side. And like I said, you can kind of do these however you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side. And then I'll put the front and the back on. And the sides screw together as well. So they all screw in through the bottom. And then there is four bolts on the two sides that go into the front and back. As you can see right here, those four holes there to help secure the uh, the whole box together. So it's, so it's already going to be secured to the frame or the chassis of the trailer. And then you can secure all the sides together as well. Uh, and you could probably figure out your own little variation if you wanted to make uh, the tailgate open, for instance, on this trailer. If you wanted to make the tailgate open on this, um, I'm sure you could figure it out. You know, you could just not screw it into the bottom and just put the, the two bottom screws in and maybe make them longer, a little bit longer screws going into the back side here in the bottom. And then, uh, And then you would allow you to have like an opening and closing uh, tailgate. Give me one second. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, let me, uh, what are you doing? Are you home now? Okay. Well, yeah, hit me up. Hit me up in a little bit. I'm like right in the middle of making a video right now. And you're ruining it. <laughs> Bye. Sorry about that. It's one of my neighbors. He, uh, was telling me he found a, uh, a bilge pump or something. We we're trying to figure out how to drain my pool, uh, the bottom of it because of all the rain we've had. Uh, my pool has been dry. And it's now it's almost summer now, and he was just telling me he has uh, found a bilge pump he's gonna bring back. <clears throat> so here's uh, the side, as you can see, or the uh, the rear part put in there. And uh, what I was saying earlier, if you put a long screw in here and maybe kind of uh, filed this corner down to make it more smooth, or you could even drill a hole up a little bit higher, or, you know, whatever, you could probably make an opening tailgate on here if you want. Which I don't know. For me, it's just too much of a hassle, and then you got to worry about the tailgate breaking off. So I didn't feel like messing with that. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this part to the bottom via these two small holes in the bottom, and then I'll put the outer screws in once I get all four uh, sides of this put on. starting to look like a whole trailer box what's uh what's everybody else doing today is doing any exciting any exciting things today working on any builds at all or working if you're unlucky having to go to work today down here in texas it has been fairly nasty outside it's been kind of drizzly rain all day So that is screwed to the bottom. Go ahead and put the front on. Sorry if you can't really see what I'm doing, but you know seen someone screw one screw in you've probably seen all you need to know about screwing screw in. Yeah. 
and uh, you don't want to over tighten any of this stuff. I probably should have said that at the beginning. You don't want to over tighten anything. You know, it's just plastic. Yeah, even if this was metal, you still wouldn't want to over tighten any of it. You know, these screw holes are so small. One turn too much and you've got a stripped out hole. Now, if you do strip out a hole on anything of mine that you're working on, you can use a drop of super glue on the screw, just like you would use a thread locker going into a metal part. You can use a drop of super glue on the screw and then put it back in and just kind of lightly use, I like to call it finger tightening, you know, using something like this where you can't get a whole lot of torque Put it in there with that and then let it dry and harden and that will pretty much cut new threads out again and, and make it almost like it was never stripped out. So now I'm going to put the side hole screws in and these are going to be 1.4 millimeter by 5 millimeter screws just like the ones in the bottom. And you might have to kind of move stuff around as you're doing this. I don't know, I, I guess maybe not. You know, it might just go right in perfectly like mine is. And the holes are uh, countersunk for the sides. So if you can see, if I turn it this way, you can't see the screw anymore. If I turn it this way, you can see the screw in there. The hole in there is countersunk. Focus, focus, there we go. It's countersunk so that you can put the screw all the way in there like that and uh, you know make it kind of disappear. Uh, it also gives it a little bit better side to side strength that way. We almost have a trailer, almost. Now this video is taking kind of a long time, but I appreciate anybody hanging out watching it right now and anybody watching this in the future. Again, most all of my stuff that I have right now for sale is all on uh, my website. And that is mofoRC.com, www.mofoRC.com, just like it sounds, M-O-F-O. And you may need to, you know, put a little pressure on these as you're first getting these started into these holes. Once they start going, you'll know that they're in there good. But to get them started, you might need to put a little bit of pressure on them. Find my last two screws here. There we go. And this little trailer should be pretty much indestructible once it's all screwed together. So ABS is a very lightweight plastic. It's one of the lightest plastics there is. And uh, extremely durable and strong, especially for the weight. And uh, the main reason I started using ABS was uh, making things like motor mounts, motor plates, transmissions, anything that has some sort of a heat behind it or that gets hot or anything like that. Uh, if you print anything out of like, I don't know, PLA or PTG or some different TPUs, Whatever that part is gets hot, they will bend and sag very quickly uh, at a lower temperature than ABS will. ABS takes quite a bit more heat than most all of the other plastics. So 
these little screws give me a little problem. There it goes. Okay, we have a box. We have a trailer box and frame. And mounts in the bottom. Now, uh, one other thing about this trailer. So this little hole up here in the front is the pivot hole. Uh, that hole is designed in a as a double vortex hole, uh, which means it's the same way I do my high clearance links. When you put a screw through it, it allows it to move like this in all directions without being loose. Without being loose, and uh, you could also you could also probably use a uh, a little I don't know you know there's probably they'll probably make some other different hitch designs for these as well that will adapt to this. Uh, we'll just kind of see what the future holds for that. But uh, that alone, when mounted onto the hitch, will allow for a little bit of up and down movement like this. But uh, to really take benefit of this trailer, you're gonna you're gonna fall in love with this little double jointed hitch here. So uh, I would definitely say go for that. <clears throat> now we can go ahead and install the axle. And uh, as I was saying earlier, there is one long side to these leaf springs and one shorter side. I'm gonna put mine on with the shorter side here going towards the front of the trailer which is going to uh, going to put the axle a little closer to the middle of the trailer I think it's almost like perfect actually it's almost right in the middle just a hair forward in the middle now if you mount it the other way you can move it a little further back and that's just whatever preference you have you can do it either way it doesn't really matter uh, as far as durability on these leaf springs, nobody asked, but I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you, you know, these are, I mean, the durability, you could probably do this all day long and they're not going to break. So there's, you know, one good thing that can be said about those is they're really, as far as uh, plastic goes, it's a great plastic to make something like a leaf spring out of. I'm going to need these four 1.4 by 8 millimeter screws here to mount through the leaf springs. I'm going to go ahead right through here in the front first, and then I'll go to the back after I do the front ones. Make sure that's all lined up. Sorry, I know you can't really see what I'm doing when I move my fat hand in the way, but there we go. And uh, same thing with this, you don't want to over tighten this screw because you want this to be able to move around in there. So you don't really want to over tighten that, just kind of get it in there all the way through. Go to the next side. And then we'll go to the back. And if you uh, ever do have any issues with anything that I have sold to you, uh, don't hesitate to send me a message and let me know. You know, if something broke or, uh, or if something doesn't line up right, just shoot me a message. Uh, usually on Facebook is the easiest to find me. Uh, and it's the same thing at, at Mofo RC on Facebook. And uh, you can PM me directly through there. And uh, I will get back to you as fast as I can. And it's usually pretty quick when I do get back to anyone on there.
that is the preferred way to contact me. If you do not have Facebook, you could also message me or rather send me an email. And uh, you can do that right through my website, through like the contact form or wherever it is, somewhere on there. You'll find it, I'm sure, if you need to. we have the axle mounted. You can see how the shackles work and everything and how leaf springs work. Just like that. Pretty great little suspension setup actually. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing soon, um, I'll probably make a leaf spring kit for the SCX24. Now that I've had a reason uh, to design a leaf spring, I'll probably go ahead and keep that reason rolling and go ahead and make a, a little leaf spring adapter kit for the 24 for anyone that wants to run a scale setup on those. You know, obviously the leaf spring isn't ideal when compared to uh, like a three or a four link setup as far as suspension travel and all that goes, but they do look a lot cooler, you know, scale wise. So on here, what I did is I just slid the hub into the wheel and put this long screw through it. I believe this is a 20 millimeter screw. I also have 22s. I might send them with 22 millimeter. I might send them with 20. Uh, just depends on whatever I have more of that day. Probably. Uh, I'm going to take the first washer and put it shiny side out. So you got like a, a kind of a chamfer on here almost. And on the other side, you see it's more rough looking and uh, more flat. I'm gonna put the flat side towards the wheel hub, and I'm gonna take the second washer and uh, put the same thing, the shiny side to the shiny side on here, just like that. Uh, that's gonna act kind of like a bearing. I mean, it's not a real bearing, but you know, this is a trailer we're talking about, not a, not a high-speed minivan or something something like that, whatever, you know, it's a trailer. So you don't really need super awesome bearings or ceramic bearings or anything like that. And just kind of lightly thread this in here. You don't even need to tighten it all the way because you want the wheel to spin freely. So I'm just going to try a little more, try a little more. Uh, it's getting a little tight. Maybe I'll back it off just a hair. And that spins free enough for a trailer right there. Go to the other side. Same thing on this side. Pick these washers up. There we go. Two smooth sides together to kind of act like a bearing. Kind of. Very loosely kind of there. And uh, do this by hand. You know, don't zing this on with a drill. You'll probably strip it out or ruin something. Okay, tighten just a little more. And back it off. Now we have some wheels on the trailer. And you can see the suspension working here. Pretty good articulation for leaf springs. I mean, that's one thing I kind of wish, uh, I kind of wish some of, some of the other manufacturers would have done. I know everybody makes their leaf springs out of metal, but it almost makes more sense making them out of plastic. And something like a uh, like nylon or maybe a TPU might even be better for leaf springs. Uh, thanks, Ben. 
Thank you. It is a good looking trailer. I love it as well. Thank you. Something like a nylon or a TPU might even be better for a trailer, uh, for leaf springs, or even for, you know, a, a truck or whatever. But uh, the ABS will work just fine on here. <clears throat> and I'll probably send, you know, maybe one spare leaf spring with each of these, just in case you do happen to snag it up on something and break one. And uh, I'll probably have a pretty cheap replacements on, on the website, too. Maybe I'll add that pretty soon here, too, put that in the options. If you want to get like a couple spare leaf springs just in case. So what we're going to do next, now that this is done, we're going to move that out of the way and we're going to go ahead and install the hitch onto the C10. <clears throat> and that is something I have not done yet, is I have not installed it onto a C10 yet. I've installed it on the Jeep, I've installed it on the deadbolt. Uh, I haven't installed it on my Betty yet either, so I'll probably have to do that next just to make sure everything lines up perfect on there. But if you don't know, the deadbolt and the uh, Betty are pretty much the same wheelbase, chassis length, you know. Well, they're all the same chassis length, but the deadbolt and the Betty are pretty much the same, uh, pretty much the same vehicle. Uh, and then the Jeep and the C10 are pretty much the same vehicle. And you actually don't have to take the wheel off. I just did that so you could see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this right onto here. You do take off this top shock mount or the top shock here screw. Take that off. Then you're going to take off the rear battery tray screw. And you're going to take off the rear bumper or, you know, in this case, the rear hit, uh, hinging mount here. So you can take those off, move them out of the way for now. Uh, you can reuse those screws. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in some 1.4 by 6 millimeters because those are my favorite screws. And they fit perfectly in my chamfered holes that I make here. So this is going to mount on here like that. Through this hole here in the back, this hole here in the battery tray, and through this body mount hole if you had a body mount on the back. I'm going to go ahead and put the middle one through the body mount first. And you can kind of do it any any way you want to. I find going through the middle makes it a little easier because these holes don't always line up perfectly. And sometimes you will need to move or, or you know, rather kind of... And don't tighten this up all the way like I just did either. Don't tighten that up all the way yet because that you don't want to tighten the middle one up first like that like I just did. Sometimes you will need to kind of move these just a hair to get them to line up perfectly. So don't tighten anything down until you get all three of them in. That one's going to go right into the rear battery tray. And don't tighten that one up yet either. This one is going to go right through this back mount here into the frame and then into that hinging body mount. And putting the last one in is where it gets a little bit tricky. Like I was saying, you might need to kind of move it around a little. There we go. Feel like that's going in. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now that I've got the third one in, I can go ahead and snug that up and just snug it. Don't over tighten it. You'll feel it. It'll, it might get tight if you're using these screws like I am, but it might not be completely tight yet because it might just be pulling itself into the countersunk part. Same thing here. Go ahead and tighten that one up. And then I can go ahead and tighten up this third one up top. Um, now I can put the shock on if I want. I'm going to go ahead and just take a guess. You know, now you've got plenty of more locations to put the shock. I'm going to kind of guess and say we'll try, uh, we'll start off right here and see where what that does for us. Stick that in there like so. Uh, this would be a great time as well if you bought a set of flex blades from me to go ahead and install the flex blade while you've got the wheel off. I'm not going to do that on this one, um, you know, I just don't really need to. I'm going to put the wheel back on. You know what, actually, let's leave that off. It might actually be a good idea just to leave them off, because it's going to make it easier to get to these hitch screws when we need to. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just take all four wheels off. It's gonna make it a little easier to get this done. It's already a pretty long video. What are we sitting at right now? Hour and five. Man. Too much talking, not enough working. Take this one off too. And that uh The other side is going to be just like this side um, when you put it on the rear. I'm going to go ahead and do the front one on this side while we're here as well, just to show you what they look like when you have all of them installed on there. Just for the sake of getting her done, same thing up here. You're going to take this little guy right here. This is going to mount to the front ESC tray, the front bumper mount, and this body hole here, body post hole here. So we're gonna take out this, and you can leave the little body post in there. Leave the other side too, so you can remember what position they went in. Let me grab some more of these, 1.4 by six. And you can use your stock screws. I might even uh, have an add-on for a complete stainless screw kit. So you can get these uh, these longer screws that go in a little bit deeper, grab a little bit more meat. right into that shock tower body mount hole. And when you're putting this one in, you're gonna to wanna to line up your body mount as you put it in. And probably just go into the same position you were at already. Just for the sake of continuity. Don't tighten that up all the way yet. Okay. Go ahead and put this shock back on. I'll put it right, uh, let's put it right there. There's plenty of options for you to put that shot kind of wherever you want. Uh, you know, if you want to move them around, experiment with your suspension, you can. If you got longer shocks, definitely makes using longer shocks easier with all of the new mounting holes you can use. And if you want to extend the rear links out longer, there's a lot more positions back here as well. Flip this over and we'll do the other side and then we'll put the hitch on.
nice and easy. There we go. If you uh, enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the little like button. I know my videos kind of suck, but doggone it, at least I'm doing them. Maybe they're just too long. That's probably the problem, huh? I do have uh, a lot of lights in my garage here, but uh, man, it almost seems like there's never enough light. No matter how many lights you have, when you're working on these little things, it's just hard to see anything. Okay, one last screw here and then we'll put the hitch on. Can't tell if I'm, there we go. Kind of feels like it's going in now. shock on the same position that I used on the other side, which is right there, I think. Let's see. Two back on the bottom. Right there. Same thing for the front. Front is going to go into one over from the middle and down one. And you can put them wherever, like I was saying earlier. You don't have to put them where I'm putting them. Hey, thanks, Dan. <laughs> I try, man. I mean, um, videos probably aren't the most entertaining, but at least I'm doing it. All right, now we have this hitch, and I'm going to go ahead and just install the main hitch onto the hitch plate here. I oh, can't see nothing. Let me move that a little. I'm going to go ahead and install this on right here into those four holes going through there. And to do that, we are going to use four... 1.4 by 8 millimeter screws. And uh, you can do it either, either way. Uh, if you want the rough side facing down, you can do that. If you want the shiny side facing down, you can do that. 
Um, I mean, I kind of dig the rough side personally. So I'm going to do the rough side facing up. But that's just me. I just I kind of like the rough finish of it. And as I'm looking at this while I install it, I can tell I might have to take the body off to mount the hitch on, on the C10. Uh, on the Jeep, you didn't have to. You know, and every model is going to be a little bit different the way these go on. So on the C10, you may have to take the body off in order to mount the main part of the hitch. You know, not this part of the hitch, but the actual... Uh, the actual hitch mount. You may have to take it off to do that. We'll find out in just a minute here. And uh, same thing, these these holes are also countersunk, just like on the uh, most all my other holes that you've been watching here that I've put in. These are countersunk, so they fit real nice uh, inside the plastic after you screw them in. I guess I could probably get away with just using a 1.4 by 6 millimeter screw here. Well, it doesn't need to be 1.4 by 8, but... Yeah, 1.4 by 8's probably got a little bit more strength of grab. <clears throat> and I might be wrong. We might not have to take the body off. I might be able to just bend the bumper in a little while I install the hitch. go. <clears throat> so there is the mounted hitch assembly there. There we go. And you can see the body still hinges up and it actually kind of nice. It actually holds it up right there. It might have a well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens when I get this part mounted on there. So this little guy here, you can mount in like five, six different ways, just depending on how you want to install it and what height you're looking for with the trailer. So let me put these wheels on, and then we'll see about where the trailer is going to sit and where I'm going to want to mount and how I'm going to want to mount my hitch. Oof. Sorry, I've actually lost one of these little nuts. So let me grab another one. So I won't spend an hour trying to find it. There we go. Uh, when you put these wheels on, here's a little fun fact. Don't crank these nuts real tight. Uh, I think that's probably the reason why so many people stock motors burn out. And everybody complains about how the, uh, the SCX24 motor burns out so fast. It may be that you just over-tightened your wheels, causing the motor to stress and overheat and burn up prematurely. So when you put these on, just use fingers, you know, like I'm doing right now. Use your fingers, tighten it, and this is actually too tight right here, so I'm just going to back it off a hair more. And you want to be able to just, I mean, just lightly touch it, and the whole thing will move like that. These should not have any sort of tension on them when you've got your nut tightened down. And if you're worried about your wheel falling off because you didn't crank them down real tight, I would just say don't worry about that because it's probably not going to happen. But if you do have that issue, you could probably use a teensy little drop of blue Loctite on there to keep them from coming off. But uh, you know these things are so slow, you don't really have that problem with 
wheels falling off on these. Also, if you over tighten these, the little hex will stick when you take the wheel off the next time. And then your little pin will fall out and you'll end up probably losing that little pin or searching for it because you over tightened the, the thing and deformed the hex. Okay, so we have this back together with the hitch on it. You see what it looks like sticking out of the back there. Doesn't really lose a whole lot of ground clearance or anything back there. Let's settle over focus, there we go. Almost just looks perfect back there, doesn't it? Nice and high and tight, almost right against where the body closes. Just like the Jeep, the Jeep looks really good too. Look at this. The Jeep is almost perfect back there too when it's installed. The deadbolt is kind of funny looking because it, uh, the deadbolt body sits up so high. It's uh, you know a little strange looking on the deadbolt. <clears throat> so this part here, when you have this assembled like I did, you know at the moment here where where it's assembled to, this is going to mount the trailer. So when you put this on the trailer. Going to use one 1.4 by 10 millimeter long screw to go through this hitch into your trailer. This part here will mount to your little receiver hitch here, and uh, I'm going to mount it right like that from the bottom up. You could probably mount it on top too, but you might have to trim some of the bumper out if you wanted to mount it on top. So I'm going to mount it on the bottom just like that. And uh, these are going to be 1.4 by 8 millimeter screws to hold this to the bumper. Uh, maybe even 1.4 by 6, but uh, we'll see what 1.4, how far it sticks out of there. 1.4 by 8 should be perfect. And there's just three holes here you go through. And do not over tighten it. Just like everything. You're almost to the glory. Almost get to connect that little hitch and see it. And you get to see what I've been working on for the last four days. I can't remember how long I've been working on this now. Just ironing it out, trying to make it all perfect. Oh my gosh. I just installed this upside down. Do as I say, not as I do. Wasn't paying attention. I installed the little block upside down. And I'll show you what I mean by how I installed that upside down. One side of this little uh, hitch block here <clears throat> has a, uh, a slant to it. I'll show you. You see that slightly slanted part here? Try and get a good view of it. And I see the slight slant on there. That is going to face away from the flat plate. Not like how I just installed it. So let's reinstall that one more time. The right way this time. And if you do you know, kind of cut out your bumper on top for clearance and mount this from the top. You can mount this from the top down on the hitch as well. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to see the little bolt heads of the hitch like that. But for this, I think this is going to be just perfect. And as I was saying earlier, there's probably eight or ten different ways you could mount all this together. All right, that is installed, just like so. <clears throat> and you can see the first joint of the hitch moves like that, up and down. 
and the second joint is going to be where it goes onto the trailer. So let's install our newly made trailer. <coughs> and to install this, you're going to use the one 1.4 by 10 millimeter screw. It's going to go right through there. Now we have a whole trailer and hitch all mounted together. And so the, the beauty of this setup with this double jointed trailer like this, you, know, you can get a full, almost a full 90 degrees there and here, and almost a full 90 degrees up and down as well. And down you can even get more, look at this, you can get, hold the whole thing over going down if you want. So for ascent and descent, you don't have to worry about your trailer holding you back when you're going up hills and down crevasses and things like that. And it can kind of rotate side to side as it goes up and down. You know, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is probably the best trailer hitch mount uh, for these little trucks to date, as far as I've seen. Now, I could be wrong. There might be another style that's better. But I like this a lot more than just having a hitch ball back there and a trailer that can flop around and fall off. You know, you hit a big rock and then, it, and then the trailer pops off the hitch ball. Uh, I think this is a much better idea than that. And it did take me a little longer to figure out how I wanted to do this double jointed trailer part, but I think it's totally worth it. You know? And uh, the whole trailer, you know, can rotate and freely uh, articulate for the most part without messing with the truck at all due to the uh, that inner joint here being the vortex style the double vortex style inner joint on the tongue of the trailer uh, plus your rotational here and your rotational there you know it just makes it you know so they're like there's almost not even a trailer there I'd love to show you me driving this but uh, unfortunately this camera is not stationary or not uh, mobile. So uh, to see the driving video, what I'll probably do is I'll probably make another video and attach it to this one so you can watch it later and see the actual driving of the trailer. And I mean, it's just, oh, I love this little trailer. It's going to be great for little accessories and things, you know, like here's a, uh, stick a big old deadbolt tire in there, jam my little motorcycle in here next to it. Look at this right here. Boom. Now you can take your motorcycle, you got a spare tire, you got a gas tank or something you want to put in there. And like I said, I'll probably make some little, uh, uh, either a little frame here or maybe like a little camper top for it. I'll probably make some more accessories for it pretty soon too. Uh, just kind of keep an eye on the website, um, you know, keep an eye on my Facebook posts. You know, obviously if you have not yet, go ahead and uh, like my Facebook page. And uh, that will get you most of my updates. And that is at MofoRC. And again, my website is www.MofoRC. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can feel free to comment on this video. Or like I said, send me a private message through Facebook or an email uh, through the website. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, sorry it took an hour and a half to make this video. But I hope you enjoyed watching it because I enjoyed building this little trailer. Thank you again and good night.